afternoon or good evening, everybody. My name is Elena Nishnik, and I am your host here today on Snap AR's live stream. We have a really awesome and special guest, Eric Narcissian, who's actually a Snap AR engineer. And today's session, as you already have seen from the title, is dedicated to understanding world AR features in Lens Studio. Eric is going to try to make it super accessible. So if you have never used the feature and have never touched it before, do not be scared and stick around until the end. Eric, thank you so much for being here with us today. Tell us a little bit about yourself and let's get into the session. Sure. Thanks for introducing me. So we have about an hour session. It's going to be on an overview of our, our world AR technologies. So you may have heard of world AR or location AR, but it's going to be focused on the back camera of the phone and, and what all these trackers and location assets are about. Um, I really want to approach everyone at, at a beginner level and I want to go over our documentation or templates and all the, the, the components and objects in Lens Studio to give you a nice grounding of, of all this world AR tech we're developing. And I also want to talk about where we're going in the next six months to one year and, and what you can expect from us um, as, as we keep developing this technology. But this is really kind of a first video, like a primer. And we'll be expected to do a lot of deep dives in all these different technologies. So uh, if you need some more advanced stuff, just let us know and we'll be planning those, those videos out as well. So for this uh, one hour that you'll be joining me, I'll be talking about our basic trackers. So device tracking and the different mo tracking modes that are on it, such as rotation and surface mode. Um, these slides will be made available and all these links as well. So I went through and I, I linked up our, our documentation, our, our API and our template projects. Uh, after the, talking about the device tracking component, we'll talk about world mesh and um, how to start generating real-time mesh of what the camera is seeing around you and also how to do uh, some ray casting on it for item placement. So this will cover about three more templates there are some more advanced templates like world tracking planes or world mesh, and I'm just going to talk about what's interesting about them because it's more about what's what's coming down the uh, pipeline, what you can expect from us, such as plane detection and, and uh, classifications. And for the, the second part of the video, we'll be going into our location AR platform, so custom locations, uh, city scale and uh, spatial persistence. So these are all related and kind of connected and we're going to talk about them in one grouping. And to wrap it up, we're going to talk about uh, connected lenses, which is kind of like um, shared experiences. So you can play games or have experiences with your, your friends um, in one lens that you're sharing. And talking about our tools, the content editor and, and physics lab, uh, the physics lab is the most recent thing that we've released. So with that, I'm going to get going. So these are a lot of template projects. I'll be um, jumping back and forth in Lens Studio. So if, if it takes a little bit of time, I'm, I'm just going to be looking at documentation first, and then I'll, I'll show you the template project. But just so you know that I'm, I'm going to be spending a lot of time either in in this area, this, this documentation of Lens Studio, or this API section here. Um, a lot of these areas are actually going to be revamped too, and we're going to make things more organized as we're moving along. So we have some good stuff to look forward to there. But under guides and lens features, the tracking, world tracking here, is actually a big part of this. Um, and the modules that we have to look for with device tracking is this rotation and surface. We're going to build up from most simplest down to world being the most complicated. And there's going to be a template or two connected with each. And they use more, more of the sensors on your phone. There's more sophisticated techniques as we go from rotation surface to world. And hopefully, as, as you, the, the lens creator, will get a good overview of all these different options you have so that you can choose them better as you're developing your lenses. Um, just a quick move around. We are going to be moving down into world mesh. So marker tracking is very interesting, but it's not really a focal point. And object tracking um, could be like body tracking or hand tracking that um, we're not uh, focusing on with, with the world as much. And sometimes I'll be moving down here under the templates 
we have a lot of world-based templates and location AR templates. So as far as the device tracker is concerned, let me just jump over to Lens Studio. And I'm going to jump out of that template project. And the first one I want to show you is this look at. So when you go into Lens Studio, it's actually worth noting that there's a lot of templates and you might get overwhelmed. So they are ranked by amount of difficulty and um, alphabetical ordering. But it's also really useful to know that you can jump right into Landmarker or the world. And these are the ones that uh, I'm going to be jumping into in this session. So if I move down to look at, look around here, this is the first one. Um, so uh, the rotation tracking mode is, is very simple. Um, the objects that are going to be placed around you are, let me just close this map, no, you'll get into that later. Um, in this template, there's just a bunch of bird objects. And so it's really interesting to look at like how models are brought in and how animations are connected. Uh, but what I'm really interested in is if we look at the interactive preview, actually first, if you look over at the camera, um, you're always going to have to have a camera object, um, a camera component, I should say, connected to a scene object and a device tracking component. And here we have our three main tracking modes and we're going to build up eventually into a world. But for rotation, it's simplest, quickest, uh, least processing, I should say as well. And if I look around, I can see that there's these five birds that were placed around us, you know, cute flying around. Um, and I'm just gonna focus on one and I'm gonna move toward them. And you can see that they're keeping the same distance from the user. Um, so it looks like they're kind of flying with you, but that's because we're not tracking their position. We're actually um, tracking the phone's rotation. So we can kind of look around and we can get a, a good um, accurate sense of where the the AR object is in relation to the user's device and but it just keeps that initial offset as you see as I move forward and back So as I move into the surface mode, again, the, the rotation mode, the objects kind of, you could look around and they kind of kept that fixed distance from you. And I'm gonna go into this animated object template. Um, our documentation, if you're interested, um, it's this static object in the world. Um, I was just on look around here. The good thing with the, the templates um, documentation is that if going into Lens Studio, there might be too many moving parts happening at once. Usually we have a nice video and we have some uh, a nice breakdown of how the Lens Studio scene um, is pieced together. So it might be easier to read through. So I just covered the look around with uh, the rotation mode. And next I'm going to jump into this, this static object, which got updated to animate object. We'll be uh, updating our documentation. But this one is using the surface mode. And you can see there's kind of this fractal pattern here. Uh, this is just trying to find the the quickest like horizontal uh, plane. It might be the ground, or if you're looking at like and the table is taking up a lot of view, it might pick uh, like the table plane. But think of it as trying to pick the quickest, biggest horizontal plane um, that your camera can find. And so in this case, we have these two characters are both using this, this ground object controller. Um, again, obviously dig in and learn a lot about how the, the models, the animations, the scene object hierarchies in these helper scripts are working. But what I'm primarily concerned with is again, we have our camera component 
We have our device tracking component, and we're now in surface tracking mode. Um, the beautiful thing of this is it's very fast. It'll find you some type of floor or table as quickly as it can when a uh, Snapchat starts the lens. And in this case, when I'm moving them, you can you get a visual representation of the, the horizontal plane that it's fine. So you can't move them, you know, on, on any other surfaces, and um, it might kind of clip into other physical objects. But you get something going super fast, uh, and, and it's a it's a great tech to just get some type of immersion going in a, in a, in a location AR experience. And as we move from a rotation mode to surface mode, um, a big jump into world mode is that you have access to the world mesh. And this allows for more accurate um, hit testing. So with user input, if they're, if they're touching the world around them and you want to determine, hey, are, are they touching um, something that might be the wall or the floor or the table, and I want to spawn stuff in that spot, um, we have hit testing. And we also can do occlusion uh, with the world mesh. So that's um, trying to hide the AR objects behind physical objects so that they appear to be in the, the real scene, the real world a lot more. So it's the real world objects that are occluding the AR objects. So this uh, the world mesh would have an occluder uh, material on it and acting as the physical objects to hide the AR objects that are behind it. So the big thing um, that now you can place stuff, not just on this grand horizontal plane, this, this the biggest you know, horizontal plane with the surface mode can find, it will actually try to build a mesh around all the physical surfaces as accurately as possible. And then through the physics system, through ray casting, um, where the user presses the finger on the screen, it'll try to, to find, um, shoot ray out into the virtual world, hit whatever part of the world mesh and tell you that position and normal information for item placement or whatever else that you wish to do with your lens. So um, before World Mesh, it's actually simpler to see this with another template called the Simple World Mesh. And so I'm gonna go back into our world category and I'm gonna go down here to Simple World Mesh. Eric, actually, while you're doing that, we have a question in chat from Martin. And Martin's question is, if you want to create a world mesh for occlusion and to not create your object behind walls or objects, do you need a look around stage to create the mesh? And how do you decide when it is enough? So you, so Martin wishes to have an use the world mesh as an occluder, but sometimes you want to pick and choose like which physical objects you want to occlude the AR objects, if and I, I guess, understood the question. Yeah, I guess let's make sure that we understand the question correctly. So Martin, let us know if that's, uh, if that's what you're intending to do with your lens. And while we're waiting to hear from Martin, uh, Kevin does says, what I really want is world mesh for VFX collisions. So here you go, Eric, one for your wish list <laughs> to bring back to your team. Absolutely. Um, actually, while well, I'm just waiting for that to load up, um, I think it was in the world mesh template that there is, yeah, so this is showing the depth material that um, you can use the world mesh and you can get effects going in the material editor. And here, I think this is what you're referring to, passing the world mesh data into our VFX uh, editor. And here we have a cloud that's raining down particles and it's hitting the, either the table, the chair, or the floor. So I could show you how to access this part of the template. And I think you're referring to this type of technique, but you can let me know um, otherwise. Yep. So this is the simple world mesh. Um, it did not have those more advanced techniques such as having the world mesh um, interact with the, the VFX editor. But what I like about this is um, we could just get straight to the point quickly. So we have our camera component, we have our device tracker. Now we're moving into world mode. Um, 
And as I look around, we have this mesh that's being drawn. Uh, the material is just drawing um, wherever in this case we would have a world mesh that's going to generate around the chairs and the floor and the walls. But where I click, we can start to instantiate prefab. So we have the floor, which we get with the surface. Um, but we can also start to get tables and chairs and not everything has to be horizontal. It's whatever the normal of that, um, that polygon on the world meshes. And this script is actually very straightforward. So I'm just going to take a moment to find it. And I just want to show you a few lines of code. I believe it's this cut to spawn. Sounds great. Perfect. So this script, uh, this script tap to spawn, um, is just checking if we have a device tracker, and then we just down here you see that we're creating event and a tap event, and we're just binding this little function right here. This event data is getting passed in whenever there's a tap event. The user presses the screen, and we're getting the tap position, and then we're calling the spawn position. So this this get tap position, which ends up going into this variable called touch position, is going to be uh, a vector two. So you have an X and a Y position on the screen where the user pressed. And based on that, um, this is the first time that we're actually kind of calling an API here. So we're going to the device tracker and we're calling this hit test world mesh and we're passing in the screen position and we're getting um, a list or an array of results back. And depending if the length is greater than zero, if it's something, now when you, when you shoot a ray out in, for the physics system, we might um, hit multiple polygons. There might be many parts of the world mesh, or there might also, you know, I was gonna say there's other um, meshes, but that's using uh, colliders and you wouldn't get that with the, the test world mesh. But the way that the world mesh gets created is you might hit multiple parts of it. So as long as there's at least one result, we're going to grab the first one, which would be closest to the camera, if there's multiple. We're going to grab that position and that normal. And then we're going to instantiate the prefab that we had connected to the script. Um, we're not going to parent it to anything. And we're going to set its world position to whatever here, whatever the position of the, the polygon on the world mesh we had. And then we orient it. So we get the traditional up, like global up vector, and we project that onto the normal. So we make um, a little plane where the normal is, and what, however the, the up, the global up, gets projected onto that, um, that, that little plane, um, we can use our quaternion lookout method with our forward direction, which is coming from that up projection and the normal coming off the polygon to um, figure out how to rotate the objects, the art or prefab into position, and then we set its rotation. So just a, this is a pretty powerful script. It's compact and it gets right to the point. So I really liked, I wanted to show that off. So following that very quickly, I just want to show the API. Okay, so this is our API. Um, this link is in the slides as well. And I want to get you used to also coming over here and looking stuff up. So here under components, we have the device tracking component. And it you know, it might take a little getting used to, but actually the, the world mesh is kind of encapsulated within the device tracker. So when you want to first have that device tracking component set to world, uh, you need to call methods onto it. Uh, I, I'm sorry, you should call its methods, but the big ones that you're probably interested in is are the, the hit test, the world mesh, and this gets a screen position and usually from user input. And you could also do the, the ray cast world mesh. So if you had one location in your world, one 3D location position to another, you know, this would be um, very useful as well. Yeah, I'll cover this, um, this in a, in, I'm going to cover two more kind of more advanced templates really quickly, and this is gets pretty interesting. And before I proceed, did um, about the occlusion, I just want to know if um, yeah, so, Eric, 
to that. We didn't hear back from Martin just yet. Hopefully, if Martin is still watching, um, they can get back to us okay. and let us know if we understand the question correctly. But uh, I'll keep you posted if we hear back from Martin. Thank you. Perfect. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'll, I'll quickly just comment on, let me load up on my next one. I'm going to move to just, um, yeah, I'll talk quickly about world mesh and the, the tracking planes. But what I wanted to comment about the occluder was that normally you want to generate, um, you, you want to take the whole world mesh, you're going to apply a, a occluder material onto it and kind of across the board, like your AR objects, if they're behind the world mesh in some perspective from the user's device, it will be occluded uh, based on how the world mesh is kind of sitting on top of it. If you did want to be smarter about it for some reason, if you're like, oh, I only want walls to to be occluders. Like, I don't want the, the floor to be an occluder. Or if you want some type of categorization like that, that is where this um, world tracking planes um, um, is going to, I'm sorry, it's going to be this world mesh template is going to come in. So let me just talk quickly about these two templates and then that'll allow me to return back to occlusion. So uh, before we talk about categories, I'm going to quickly talk about this world tracking plane. So right now this is um, this is a, a native API, meaning it's AR kit for iPhone, it's AR core for Android. Uh, but we do the, uh, a lot of when we do a lot of indoor location lenses, this is really useful to understand what are the horizontal and the vertical planes. And so in this little example here, you can say like if the floor is a horizontal and this, this big bushes are being seen as a big vertical plane or like a wall and how you place objects. Sometimes it's, you want these big like set of planes to figure out, or sometimes it's better to have the world mesh. I will say that um, up and coming, at some point, we are integrating um, plane detection into world mesh, and there's a lot of very interesting use cases that it's um, this opens up. And just for uh, if you want to experiment with this right now, um, this world tracking planes API, you will have these events that you listen to, and they'll be called when when more planes get added or removed or updated, and so you kind of keep your your, your virtual world up to date as to, um, as the user is looking more and more and the, the native um, AR packages are understanding the world better, they'll start to build better planes. Like the, the vertical planes will match the walls better. The, the floor will have a better horizontal plane or instead of multiple segmented planes, they'll kind of be merged into bigger planes. So this actually helps a lot with world understanding I just wanted to note that it is available. It's um, only through native right now. And um, we will we have this integrated into World Mesh soon. Um, now this this template is interesting and in that it's kind of like an upgrade. It, this, it's very, I've definitely labeled this advanced. The scripts are very complicated in here, but the graphics are just so much prettier to look at. But what's interesting to say is that there's different prefabs being spawned based on the floor, the table, the wall, the ceiling. And notice where there's clouds over here, there's boats on the floor, there's stuff on the chairs. This is classification. Um, and right now, this is only, so for example, here you could determine what type of surfaces are a wall, floor, ceiling. Now, just to pull this back quickly, um, to the, the occluder conversation. Sometimes if you you might want to know, oh, I only want vertical parts of the mesh to be occluding AR objects or horizontal. You might also be able to determine, oh no, only certain surfaces that are labeled like this do I want to be occluded. Otherwise, I don't want that, that mesh to, that part of the world mesh to occlude or that, to, that plane coming from uh, the world, uh, the native tracking to, to occlude. So this is where I think um, that conversation was going, but you can let me know um, if, if I'm not correct. And I'm not going to jump into this template uh, too much. Um, 
but note i did want to raise it it's very interesting technology it, it provides for um more elaborate location air experiences and also this is something that down the road will be coming into road mesh and the vehicle oh, real quick i see if it loaded i will very quickly hunt around I wanted to see if the VFX was in this one. I don't think I picked the right one because somebody had the, was interested in how the, the world mesh can get pulled into the VFX system. I don't think it's this one. I'll follow up later on, but um, for the participant who is interested, um, there's this passing road mesh data I would suggest you read up into, and I was playing around with this previously, but uh, for the sake of time, I'm going to move on. But if there's any um, comments at this point, I can take them. Otherwise... We have no comments at the moment, Eric, and I will also make sure to link these uh, documentation articles in the chat so everybody who's interested doesn't have to dig around, and they'll be easily available in the comment section of the stream once it's converted to a video as well. Awesome. I appreciate that. That's why I'm jumping around. I, I wanted to group up all these collection of links and make it easier for, for everyone else to, to find everything. So next, we're going to be moving into um, location AR. We're kind of moving from world AR tech into location AR. So we do have these, um, this kind of started what we're calling the, the snap landmarkers, these, these very popular historical buildings. And then we moved into a custom location. So I'll move into that next. But we'll look at custom location, city scale, spatial persistence. So this is um, under templates here, we have location AR. And so this is like the landmarker guide, it kicks, kicks everything off. Um, and these are these, these popular historical buildings that we have scanned and ready to use. Or, CV data sets plus our, our 3D meshes so you can build lenses for. And what I wanted to say that when we move into custom locations, so not just those set of buildings, but if you wish to make your own location that has its own uh, computer vision data set that also has its own location mesh, 3D mesh that you could use for occlusion or, or placing items in, in Lens Studio, your first step would be this creator lens. And this is the snap code for it. And right now it's only for LiDAR, which is iPhone Pro, but very soon again, we'll be um, upgrading the world mesh where this can be cross-platform. And it, this allows you, it's like a utility lens. Um, you can go on location and there's this whole process for scanning it. And it's just checking my sign real quick. I'm not going to spend too much time in this workflow process because there is a video that um, is dedicated exclusively to this. I will say that all the way at the end, you give it a name, you upload it, and you'll get this code. And this location ID is very important. Um, and don't worry if you didn't write it down because you can click on view your uploads and you'll see them all there. Um, just recently we implemented a high location. One of our, our lens creators had about um, several hundred in your can only move through three at a time so we allowed a, a delete or hide feature for them and once you actually have your um custom location code uh, the the template itself we've updated this this if it's from the old one but um let me open up that template and you could create your own location experience and that is also part of that um, that YouTube video. And we, I forgot to mention, there's an educational course, which I put a link up to. So we, we have a lot of um, material for you on custom locations already. So it's interesting to note here is we have a camera, camera component. We have device tracking set to world. Um, we need this. This enables um, native, native AR capabilities on the phone, Android or iPhone. So we need that running. And what we do, the first uh, new things I will say that, that you 
will have access to is are thinking about is the location asset. So I come down here under resources and yes, these are these um, snap land markers I was referring to, but now we have custom location and we have world location. So custom locations for this and world location will be for city scale. But while we're here in resources, I will, you will, uh, we will be covering this location cloud storage module with spatial persistence. Um, this location texture is used with city scale and the location mesh is part of when you create a custom location. Um, if you want to see your mesh to part of the process, you, you create a, a CV data set and then you create a 3D mesh in your environment too using the LiDAR scanner. And if you want to use this down as well. So you would create this custom locate this location asset. There's one already created. There'll be like a little prompt. It's going to ask you for the ID and you're just going to type it in. Uh, eventually we'll, we'll connect it up with, with one of these web portals at my lenses. But for right now, you, you type in your location ID that you want. And the, the big next part is this located at component. So for some of you who've used this tech before, just so that, um, there is this device location tracking component. And we used to add this to the camera as well. And the location asset could get connected here. But we're depreciating that um, in favor of this located at component. So notice how um, this located at component is now sitting at the, the root scene object of this content. So if I turn it uh, off and on, what we have here is our location mesh. This happened to be a, um, a sculpture at our, our SPS conference. Um, but you can kind of recognize it because this is the, the location mesh of the scanning. Um, I'll, I'll quickly note that it, it is um, kind of is a, is a gray grayscale pre mesh, but we actually are getting the texture pipe through soon too. So that's going to be another update coming down. So you able to understand your location better for your spatial awareness within Lens Studio. And just notice how the location mesh has a render mesh visual component on it. And that location mesh I was referring to as a resource is connected to it. That location mesh just has the location asset plugged into it. And here's a little preview. But these are the little balloon characters that will spawn, come to life when um, we can localize on this location that you scanned. And so all of our content, all of our AR objects, whatever they're supposed to do, are all scene objects that are children underneath this, this kind of this root scene object per location. We now have um, multiple locations enabled the lens. So if you um, scanned multiple locations, whether maybe they're all within one building or one block, or even you know separate out further, and you don't know where your Snapchat is going to be or which location they will localize on, you know, you could easily just duplicate these out and have multiple locations with different content underneath them. And whichever set of content will turn on, you know, become activated and do whatever it is you want to do based on whichever location the Snapchat is at. So your lens is covering multiple locations. The, the trick with that is that each kind of root scene object per location just needs this located at, and it needs a different location asset per location. So this located at component is kind of the the be all end all. This is how city tech, um, city scale, and the spatial persistence is running too. So, so just use get used to use this located at component. I do wish to kind of show some documentation. For this as well so i'll jump over to the api and here's our location asset um you probably won't be getting behind the scenes but we're trying to make everything as kind of user friendly and just kind of drag and drop plug and play but you can um create your location assets and, and call methods on them um, procedurally as you care to and this is what the location asset looks in our documentation and the located at component. And here's the location is the location asset. You can swap this out if you care to at runtime. Most of you will just be creating like one 
located at can put like one scene object per location if you're doing multiple locations and they'll have you'll just build this all in studio but you could do it procedurally as well eric we have a few questions in chat uh commander is asking will this affect my old lenses that use the deprecated component no no we're keeping a device location tracking component active um, it's just we have a preferred workflow now. We just kind of are centralizing all our tech, uh, our location tech through located that component. But no, your lens will still work fine. Great. And we have another question from Oleg. And Oleg is asking, will it work for different lighting conditions, for example, day and night? And I think actually in the course, we kind of go over that a little bit. So the recommendation is that, you know, you do multiple captures, but I'll let you add more color to that. Yep, you're correct. Um, the um, previous video we did, which was an hour just on custom locations, covers some more detail, but we do have incremental scanning in our creator lens. Um, I don't know if I, I guess we, I should get an image in here, but when you go to view your existing locations, there's this little plus button. And I think that, I think I just need an updated image for that. But basically incremental scanning means that you go to the same location during a different situation, usually a different lighting condition, and you scan again, and the two scans will get merged together. So if you want a very robust location um, that will function well during sunny, rainy conditions, um, you know, morning, noon, evening, night, especially nighttime where like the lighting is drastically changing, we go from sunlight to artificial lighting you would scan that same location multiple times. Uh, we recommend at most three to four times. So try, think about doing it um, like morning, afternoon, and in the evening when the light, or in the nighttime when the lighting is, is very different. And you'll, every time you do an incremental scan, it gives you like a new code. So it's like you start with one scan and then you, do an incremental scan again. You don't create another mesh because um, your location mesh was already created the first time, but you'll go through a whole CV uh, computer vision scanning process again. And that, that CV data from first scan, the second scan will be merged together and you'll be given a new location ID, uh, but your, your same location mesh will be the same. And then if you, you know, do an incremental scan on that one, you have the, the two plus the third one so scans will start to get diluted, which is why we recommend maybe three to, to four times. But yes, yeah, it's um, this this feature is meant explicitly for the situation where you want a very robust location 24 hours a day. Got it. We have another question from Haval, and Eric, you can only answer if you may share this information. But the question is, sure. is there an intention to add more landmark templates to Lens Studio? Uh, the, the the popular historical okay. buildings. I don't believe so. Um, or because... maybe the question is not in terms of adding additional landmarks, but rather templates for oh, um, templates. Yeah, not templates. Sorry, I thought you meant the actual landmarker bones. <laughs> Thanks. Um, yes, we are. So part of this, the reason that we're creating these new videos is that we're trying the the World AR team, which. Um, encompasses real AR and location AR. We want to be more forward facing. Um, we're, we, we're spending a lot more effort this new year on refining our documentation, our templates, um, and our outward appearance, which are our videos that um, and educational courses. And if we would like to get some type of um, uh, way that we can connect with our developer community. So whether it's a Discord channel or an email or, or, or something. I'm not sure yet, but yes, we, we will be refining and improving our templates and our documentation. And awesome. any suggestions you have, pass them along. And just another thing that I wanted to call out, the course that you worked on um, with another uh, Snap AR engineer actually does feature an entire project file that we uh, are given away with it. So I linked it earlier. I can relink it again. You can download the Lens Studio project file, play around with it, and just kind of drag and drop. I know it's not a template, but you actually can do a lot with it too. So take advantage of it. And Eric, thank you for calling out Discord. For everybody who's here right now, if you guys are not already on Discord, 
go ahead and join. There are a lot of conversations happening there. Developers are helping each other out. And that's exactly the place to share feedback and any sort of feature requests, anything that you're looking forward to, um, bring it to Discord and let us know there. So I will link you to our official server in the chat as well. Perfect. And just to wrap up the conversation on custom locations, um, the locate at component, if you remember that it works with custom location, it works with city scale, it works with uh, spatial persistence, or like saving out location um, data or, or objects that your Snapchatter has created, you want to save it out from and load it back later. Locate at component, um, yes, you can swap out this location asset, but what's really important is understanding are these events here. And the biggest one is on found. So um, you basically want to listen to this event and whenever it fires is, is when you turn your content on or you instantiate it. In the case of the template, like these characters don't um, get created and, and start their animations once you localize on this um, on this, this location. And so that when you localize, it's that on found that gets fired off. Um, so the way that this template is written is that you can have multiple located at components. You could actually even have multiple um, device location tracking components. Um, in this template, we, we made it uh, so you can do any but whatever is the first one that fires off is will turn on its content. Um, so, let me fix this script. Just quickly try to open it. For those of you interested, I'm just gonna show you the part of the script. Yeah, so at the beginning here, this initialize function that gets called after this, this gets created. Basically what it's doing is it's going through um, all the device location tracking components and all the located at components that it found, and it listens to them. And then whoever the first one that says, yes, I've, I've localized, I, I am a location that, that your tracking component can start to track at. Um, so you could read through here. We're just looping through all the scene objects uh, in a recursive manner. And if we find one of them that's either a device location track component or a locate at component, we just throw them into a list or an array. And then we go through them and listen to all their events. Um, sometimes it's interesting to listen to, um, you know, you can at this this locate at component, this location asset that's connected to it, we could track on it. Everything's working fine or it's not working fine. Or it's ready, it's been downloaded and ready to try to be found. Or some type of error happened, we better reset the whole thing. Um, on Lost, I've never gotten to um, fire off that much. I'll have to get back to you on that. But on found is the big one. And um, if you're outside, um, if you create this location outside, divide the distance to location will be really accurate. If you're inside, uh, GPS isn't so accurate, so this might not be the best um, you know, accuracy. Cool. So next is city scale. I got a few more projects to go through. I um, I might just go through the the documentations instead of opening them. Uh, but don't worry, we will definitely be having a full one hour video on city scale. It's a very important one for us. Uh, but city scale is currently available in London, LA, uh, or two locations in LA, I should say, LA and, and Santa Monica, which you could debate this for them, LA too. But um, this is really awesome. So you can for those sections, we have this new tab, the map tab, and um, in Lens Studio, I'll just open that because you should get familiar with this because we're going to be implementing a lot of features, I should say, dealing with 
custom locations in studio and actually we're going to be offering some map services to our developers for use in uh, lens we, we're going to want um, lens creators to, to have access to all the publicly so when you create a, a custom location through the scanning lens it's it's designated as public so others can use it too um, and we also are creating a way to um, We'll be releasing an asset where you can have the Snapchatter create their own custom locations through your lens, but you, you don't have access to the data. It's just the Snapchatter working with us, with, with our API. Or you call the API and it kind of creates like a data bridge between the Snapchatter and, and us. And we allow the Snapchatter to create private locations. So in your lenses, if you want to make games or, or messaging services or, or, or you know applications, that run in their home or, or wherever else that they don't want to share their location with other Snapchatters. And it's awesome because they can do whatever you want in your lens and using spatial uh, persistence, you know, you can save out the lens and they can load it back and continue doing what they're doing. But our first step with the map is at least we have London, LA and Santa Monica, and you can um, drop pins down to designate where you want to create your located at component. So it functions very similar to custom locations. It's just now you, you place down pins and that'll create this type of location asset for you. But ultimately you're creating this scene object that has this located at component with this location asset that was generated from this pin on this map. And then when you create the lens, um, if the Snapchatter is walking by in this, in this for this situation is on this part of this Kingly Street, you know, your experience, your content will come up and localize and be displayed at its pins. But you also get the city mesh available. Um, so in the interactive preview in Lens Studio, you actually will have a 3D mesh of the surrounding city. So as you build your experience, it, it's very easy for you to understand what's happening. And yeah, so this um, template documentation is going through how that, how that city mesh is. You can turn that on and um, here's like the, the textured mode and here's the, the UV mode for debugging. Um, and this is what the kind of pins look like and the content will place underneath. But the map is really cool. We've just got it built out for city scale, but be on the lookout. We have a lot of ideas cooking for this. And Eric, actually earlier when Aval asked the question, I misunderstood it. So Aval actually did mean whether or not there is a plan to add more countries and cities to the list oh. of city scale AR landmarks. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure if you can talk about that at the moment. Maybe the best thing to do is just kind of stay in touch with the um, Snap AR. But we are curious to hear what city and locations and countries you're looking uh, to see as part of, of this tech. Yes, we do have um, two to three cities that are on the near horizon. I have in a previous video talked about them, and then I, I found out uh, it may be too early to talk about. It. So since I'm not entirely, I think it's for public knowledge, but since we just um, had our space, but I am not sure right now, but I will say that there are um, two to three cities that are on the near horizon and what our plans are with public locations is to make more accessible locations, not even just on the cities that we're curating, but now you know, um, lens creators can create locations. We're going to make the the creator lens, you know, available cross platform, much more robust world mesh. And with that, you can create public custom locations that will be accessible on this map as well. So. Yeah, besides these cities, there's definitely uh, at least two or three more cities in the near term that will be added. And um, we're also working on getting all the public custom locations. And we're also working on like quality metric, like how to know if custom locations are working well in the day, in the nighttime, um, how often they're being used, some type of like quality metric so that you, the lens creator, would have this map asset available in Lens Studio and you can now select cities, you can select all these, you know, public custom locations and you can understand like a rating system from other lens creators, how well they think these custom locations are. Um, and 
you can um we'll, we're working on more robust interactive preview tools so that you can do more testing and debugging of your location lens in lens studio before you have to go like on site for that kind of quality testing i mean ultimately ultimately it'd be amazing that if our tool set where we're trying to get it to in the interactive preview and lens studio is robust enough where you the lens creator can create quality location lenses anywhere in the world using the tools in lens studio and you don't necessarily have to go on site um to launch your lens at to your Snapchat population. Eric, well, what I can say is that you've definitely built up the anticipation. Uh, many people just want us to tell them now which other cities have been added to, but we can't do that. So stay in touch, stay tuned, <laughs> and follow us on, on Twitter. I'm sure we'll make an announcement as soon as that information is public. Uh, but in the meantime, like I said, we are all ears and would love to hear what you guys are looking forward to seeing please let us know. Um, actually, Haval responded that the interest would be for a an ancient citadel in the city of Erbil in Iraq, uh, which is visited by thousands of people every day. Um, and they hope to see it in the template soon. So let's keep our fingers crossed. And Eric, your team seems to have a lot to do. <laughs> <laughs> Always. Well, it's good. it's good to hear the feedback. I, I'm tempted to, I don't know if that would be what we would call like a snap plan marker where it's a building or location that that gets um mapped by us but i can definitely say um if somebody lives nearby they can use the the creator lens to turn it into a custom location and, and with that cv data you can um create a location lens and the other technology is at right city scale so if the city is actually mapped by city scale around that area then you would be able to create location experiences around but I think the quickest route is custom locations. Absolutely. I think too, you know, just with how dispersed our developer community is, right? That is probably the fastest tool that you guys have right now available. Go out on site, uh, get that scans. Obviously, as we said, you know, right now it's limited to iPhones with LiDAR, right? But if you have access to the device, go out there, scan your location and create an awesome AR experience. Very cool. Um, and for the remaining minutes, um, I'm going to do a quick speed through so that we can have uh, some Q&A time. Uh, but spatial persistence is very important. We put a lot of effort in this. Um, you may um, already be using cloud storage or local storage. So we offer storage solutions on our API where if you want to like save out stuff onto the device uh, for your lens, um, just wherever the state was that the user was, was using your lens and when they load it back you know you can load that information back up so we have kind of that local storage and then we offer cloud storage solutions and now we have what's called location cloud storage so you do need this module it's a resource um, this template um, just is, shows you a very basic functioning of spatial persistence and it's working off custom locations this does need to be updated a little bit because it does say markers which we change the name to um and we'll get to changing this but this is showing that um you know like this location was uh, a living room or, or what have you. you can see the couch here but this is just a visual representation of the store and it's just saying like these three objects can be created and deleted you can move them around and manipulate them and it'll be saved and then when you go back to the lens and you successfully localize on this custom location the cloud store will will bring back these objects or just sustain these objects and you the developer can you know instantiate the prefabs and reset their transforms or uh, what have you um, based on your, your save information so it's a very powerful um back end uh, api for you to use it's again it's using location assets you do need this location cloud storage module you just add it it's just a resource that you added to your project um, and this project goes through all the parts of it and there's some light interactivity like you can tap to delete these objects and you can tap this UI here to create new ones and then you can come back to the lens and relocalize remember that on found event I was talking about and it will load the content back up so I, it's it's huge for lens, you know more robust lenses that allow the user to come back or, um, we have like a furniture 
um, a little trying out furniture and you can come back and manipulate your, your AR furniture. So actually, I think there was a little, yeah. So here's the location cloud storage module on the API. Um, you don't really mess around with it. You just kind of create this options. And within the this location cloud storage options, you say what location you're trying to look for. And if this location asset fires off, like it says on found, then location cloud storage does a lot of backend work for you. It just returns the collection of data that you store. And okay, so I kind of labeled this section utilities and infrastructure, but there's a lot of interesting projects that we've worked on. This one happens to be a bit um, older one, and it's I don't want to call it like a deep tech. It's sophisticated, and so it doesn't get as much love as as it should. Um, but it's basically think about um, all the complexity of multiplayer apps or games um, abstracted away for you. So you could just be in this space and you could like just map it and start playing and you can invite people and they'll come into your space and the two you can manipulate stuff, play games and You'll be in your different coordinate frames, you, um, but you'll be able to look at each other's shared content, interact with the same stuff, and it will appear in the same location for all the different users. Um, and so this is a whole nest of awful wickedness if you were to like have to figure, figure this out by yourself. So connected lenses, technology, and template is available for you. And... Um, Either there's different like workflows for how people can connect up. You can either go search for them in your contacts, or you can like generate a snap code that your your friend can look at in Snapchat, and they can open up the same lens session and be in this like the same shared coordinate space. Um, so it, it's it's intense, and I say it, if you want to take your time with it, it's an amazing template, and it hits a lot of our tech stack. Um, so just something to be aware of and it is so, um, it's right here actually connected lenses. So I'm in the overview and there's this like development workflow and, and life cycle and example and sharing data. And it, it's, um, you know, it is not a, a light lens or a light template to get involved with, but it's bro broken down, like how to do testing, um, the life cycle, meaning what's like the life cycle of this shared session, this multiplayer session. Um, and it has um, able to use cloud storage as well. So, you know, opening the lens without an invite, how to start a connected lens state, uh, an invitation flow, how do you invite your friends into your lens session, into your, your, your shared uh, coordinate space so that you guys can play with something together. Eric, we have a question from Kevin though, and the question isn't, let me know if you can answer, but the question is, is the connected lens template still relevant? It doesn't work for me when I, and, and they use the sync framework template instead. So I guess when you say here connected lenses, what you really mean is just building out the interactivity between multiple Snapchatters that are communicating in the lens, right? Um, so do you know whether or not, um, you know, the sync framework template is, the one that people should be using or they should just be looking at the documentation for connected lens built out for location-based AR experiences. Yeah, it's interesting. Actually, I haven't seen this one. Um, I'm not sure if this is new. It might be. So connected lenses is definitely um, a few years old, um, but I've used that technology, the kind of the core technology behind it. I just wanted to reference quickly is this connected tracking component. So you may have stumbled across this tracker besides like device tracking and device location tracking. And this is the tracker that I use in uh, connect, uh, my uh, creator lens. And this is the main one for connected. So like join a multiplayer session, start building. And I use this um, connected track component extensively. So I know a lot of this connected lenses technology is definitely still viable. Um, if you're having issues, I have to, maybe the template 
has a you might be in if you what you could do is just send me your lens studio version so that i can check out the template and make sure that um, has kind of some part of it has not broken um because again we're kind of revisiting all our documentation and templates and connected lenses as um you know on the back where it has it been a priority for us so i'll definitely check it out as far as see yeah, it's, so Kevin, you know where to find me. Let me know. Um, we've, we've been chatting offline, so let me know if you want to send the project for us to take a look at. As far as the SYNC framework, um, actually, the education team worked on this video and we released it in January of this year. Um, so, you know, it's still fresher. So check that out for sure if you're interested in creating uh, sort of multiplayer experiences. And this video comes with a project as well. Uh, and it's Airpong, if you guys are into um, Airpong. Or Very air hockey, important. I should say air hockey, yeah, not yeah. <laughs> No, I'm glad I learned about this. I'm gonna update my own documentation. I think this might I'm gonna I'm gonna I'll, before I comment more, I'm gonna go and, and review it. I'm glad you brought this to my attention because this might be a more updated use of connected lenses. But very cool. Thank I'm you. glad you made it educational experience about it. And Eric, I know we're coming up on time, so let us know if you have a few more minutes uh, to cover more things. And in the meantime, I'll be checking the uh, chat session section as well, just to see if people had any more questions for you. Um, mm -hmm. So far, it seems like you've covered all the bases and all the questions. So thank you so much. Yeah. Let me spend like one minute sure. wrapping up and oh, let's see what type of Q&A we got. Yeah, so this, I just wanted to show you the documentation is a connected lenses API. Uh, this is the, the cloud storage module. So it's not the location cloud storage module. This is a generic, this isn't tied to a location. This is like any type of storage you need. You don't want to put it on device um, because uh, you know, it's, the user might um, reset it or, you know, they, uh, it's more robust if you save to the cloud, I should say. So it's like your best storage solution. That's not location based. Okay, tracker. Yeah, there's only two templates. I, I wanted to really mention this is content editor tools. A lot of effort when it, this is kind of like um, connected lenses where it's a, a lot of um, really just intense challenges and awful nastiness like got wrapped up into a suite of tools that are super awesome. Um, these are custom components so you can bring into your project. So a lot of um, challenge reaches we had to face, I should say, were wrapped up into these custom components. And so they're kind of high level and um, I think maybe they scare people or they just don't know what to do with them, but they're really solid and robust. If you spend a little bit of time with them, you'll be able to like reuse them. The whole point is that we're trying to give you massive tool sets that are easy to use, that allows you to create really great lens experiences easier. And so this deals a lot with um, some of the issues with managing content storage, um, how to give like UI carousels or like a, like a plethora of content, how to manage what the, the user is doing with them all. And that's what this content editor tools template is. It's, it's just exposing you to these tools and what you can do with it. So it's a little abstract. It's not like a very concrete um, example that that's more simple, you know, like. So give it a little bit of time because it's a lot, a lot of um, our best engineering kind of went into this tool set here. And it's very complementary to custom locations um, and city scale. And we, what we just released to try and make it a much funner or more grounded situation is we just released this physics lab, which a lot of effort went into. And actually it's, it's become very popular. So we're very happy. It was well received by the, our, our community. And it's just a series of, of puzzles and tutorials, but it was all built using the, the content editor tools and to showcase what you can do with these content editor tools. So think of them as a suite of tools that you can almost make like more sophisticated apps and games in your lenses that, that we've wrapped up a lot of really awesome stuff and in, in easy to use APIs and, and custom components and prefabs. And so I really want to focus, if, if you have some time, play with the physics lab. Not only is it a lot of fun and it, and it, and it creates time killer and fun games all um, thrown together, but it shows off the real highlights of the back end of tech, which is this content editor tools. So these select manipulators, move manipulators, moving your content, 
scaling, rotation. So it's like tool sets that you might use on desktop, you might use in Lens Studio, and Snapchatters kind of need access to some type of tool sets like this for more elaborate, you know, 3D experiences. But they're wrapped up in a nice tool set for you already. And with that, um, I will conclude this this overview, this Eagle flight over World AR, Location AR. So hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, what would be really useful for us is if any any uh, feedback, ideas, suggestions, if, if you could funnel them our way, I greatly appreciate that. And we'll be having a, a series of videos for the year. Eric, thank you so much for being here with us today. And we will leave this uh, stream. We'll end on a wholesome note by reading one of our latest comments in chat from Sasha. And the comment says, I love this. It's just perfect look and uh, it'll work for their future AR games. I'm assuming that's actually about the um, the physics um, that you just showed off, the, the content creation tool, the content editor within the lens. Mm -hmm. um, so that's really awesome to see. I know that your team has spent a lot of time working on it. Absolutely love all the possibilities that it opens up for our creators. And um, I'm just checking our comment section. It doesn't seem like there is uh, any uh, more, are there any more questions? Um, actually, I take it back. Uh, Kevin has another question. Would the physics lab work with camera kit web? Uh, do you know if that would work, Eric? I'm going to say yes, only because we have a lot of contact with the camera kit and a, and a lot of our tech has expressly been made to work with camera kit as well. So I'm going to say all this tool set works. Um, the only gotcha is I know that custom locations is heavily slated for camera kit. I don't know if it's been publicly re like released as part of camera kit yet, but it will be soon. So I'm, I'm going to give it a yes. Awesome. Okay. And before we uncover any more secrets and build out any more anticipation, as now our viewers are really excited to see what other two cities will join the list of uh, City Scale AR, I think it's time that we say goodbye and thank all of our viewers for being here with us today. Eric, thank you for an incredible session. And as you mentioned, this is just one of many series that we'll dedicate to covering world AR, creating location based experiences. So please stay tuned. Don't forget to enable your notifications on uh, YouTube. And if Twitch is your platform of choice, we're also streaming on Twitch. We'll see you guys in the next episode. And until then, have an awesome time. See you soon.